Hi all, Mass Barn Cup from Kaiser Power Electronics here. Next to me is a pretty large solar inverter. It is from a company called Ever Solar. It is perhaps the model TLC and it's rated somewhere between 10, 12, 15, 17 kilowatts. The sticker is missing from the unit and all I have is this picture of the front plate. So there's actually not much to know about it other one we can find out ourselves. The internet does not actually seem to have much on this unit either. So we will do with the power electronics, but that's also what we like. This is an extremely heavy solar inverter. Uh, so let's go through the inputs and outputs down here and you will have to do with a still picture. So first we have the input output DC switch for the photovoltaic panels and then we have what seems like 10 connections to strings so that's a total of five different strings then there is a USB Ethernet RS485 and RS232 serial connections and then we have the mains plug so now that we get back to the inverter itself we now know that we have the PV voltage input over here down the right side we have what seems to be two strings going up here. We have positive positive and a common negative. Or maybe that just actually continues into two separate rows. It does not seem to be connected down here. Up here we have what seems like some kind of module here. Uh, we have something like seven screws for the two lines LV1 and LV2. This probably is some kind of line voltage regulator from these two modules. They are some kind of IDPT brick from the markings that is gate emitter collector, but then it goes AC, AC, A, C, A, C, A, gate emitter, gate. So it's kind of a peculiar marking there. Up here, there's no doubt we have a huge DC link capacitor sitting here, and we have a three-phased output inverter. We can see from the three-phased board here. We actually have four isolators, so perhaps this is actually what could be a three-phased full bridge output inverter. Current transformers, and then we have the output filtering, and we have the three-phased output sitting over here. The interface communication board is uh, quite interesting, because here we have what seems to be some kind of Atmel development board. And that is not what controls this unit. That up here we have some kind of DSP or FPGA doing just the inverter part control. So it will be interesting to see what kind of power electronics is hiding underneath here. So let's get everything torn apart. All the control boards are gone. We can now see the huge filtering board we have down here for filtering the photovoltaic array inputs. Actually had, has uh, large electrolytic capacitors. I don't think I have seen this before, but most likely to stabilize the DC voltage. But this little capacitance won't do much, I think. Not if you're pulling 10 kilowatt out of this unit. Here we have the mains connection and we have the main filtering sitting over here and we can also see this board have taking a lot of water damage it's full of rust down here so we can finally turn the power electronics board around and reveal what's underneath oh. TO247 devices <laughs> well that explains why it looked like a pretty weird module, that it is just diodes and IDPT switches. And then for the three-phased output inverter, we do have these other packages. So these up here are FZ06NPAO45. So something like 600 volt, 45 amp. And down here we have diode, 
diodes, diodes, three switches, and the same over here, five diodes, three switches. So some kind of hybrid inverter here for line voltage regulation. I was actually wrong about these being the same ITPT switches, because it's actually three different kinds, and there is an explanation to this. Over here we have what is the PV1 string, and then we have the PV2 string. And if we look at the input, the PV2 string is only rated for 11 amps, and this is rated for 22. So that's a pretty good deal about the design here, so that's why we see smaller ITPTs used over here. These are Fairchild FGA25N120. And over here we have Infineon K40 T1202. So something like a 25 amp device and a 40 amp device. Diodes are most likely Schottky diodes. It's Fairchild RHRG7520. So 75 amps, 100, 1200 volts. On the other side, all the ITPTs over here are the 18N120, and we have the same, perhaps, shut key or normal ultra-fast diodes as we have here on this side. This is the input side, and this is the output side to the two line voltage regulating power supplies. It's not that easy to get all of the line voltage regulator into the view here, but we can see we have two similar inductors and there is two single switches sitting on a heatsink here, and we have some kind of isolated power supply. But there's also this huge array of eight power resistors, rated for seven watt, three kilo ohm. So I'm kind of wondering if the line regulation is actually just burning the energy out here. That seems uh, quite, quite um, weird, so I'm uh, kind of wondering what this actually does. The 10 capacitors in the DC bulk bank, 500 volt, 390 microfarads, they are actually connected like this, that we have a connection here, and we have a common connection between positive and minus, and then we have an output positive here. But the center of this capacitor bank also goes to the three-phase output rectifier, so perhaps this is actually running some kind of midpoint connected inverter, this could be some kind of a level shifter or voltage doppler, or would that be a voltage halfer maybe? I'm not uh, quite sure how that uh, actually works because this is a... Yeah, I think this is a four layer board, uh, and it's not quite easy to see the tracks underneath this huge um, DC bank. Here at the output side we have X1 capacitors for dealing with transient and noise filtering. But we also have these Tyco Electronics relays. So we have a total of eight of these. And in many solar inverters, these relays are actually what we see failing. And many people have successfully repaired their solar inverters by changing these relays to something with a higher current or actually adding just some passive or some active forced air cooling to them. The huge input and output board, not that much interesting stuff to see here. We have the same 500 volt, 390 microfarad capacitors, and we have it sitting both in front and after the filter. So this is not voltage stabilizing, this is just filtering and catching some large transients. I'm not sure if you actually have higher transients on solar panels from being outside the house and exposed to weather and lightning. So therefore it could see some higher voltage uh, potential differences than everything else inside your house. The two large inductors over here, three-phased. And then we have here what seems to be a small sampler of uh, current. We have a current transformer sitting here. And I actually think this is a earth fault detection. Seems so by how it's connected over here near the ground connection. So uh, most likely some kind of earth leakage um, detection for yeah, protection against earth leakage between your solar panels and your roof, house, everything else. All there is left in the cabinet now is five large inductors. 
which probably also adds a great deal to the weight of this inverter. It's still super heavy. I can't even tell that I pulled out all the electronics. And of course, we also have a nice large heatsink sitting over here. So let's uh, see what that looks like. I think this is the first time ever that I have had to use a crowbar to get into a solar inverter. All the black stuff here is water tightening up against the huge inductor block. What a behemoth, completely um, unmarked. We got no idea what that is, but it's of course smeared in silicone. Uh, now the heatsink, same story. I had to knock a, oh, I'm not sure what you call that in English, but uh, one of these punches. Uh, knock that up under the heatsink and then use a crowbar to actually get it to release the rest of it. And there it goes. <laughs> ah, not quite yet. There it goes. Quite a lovely heatsink and actually quite unusual f uh, fin design here that's uh, hollow. I don't think I have seen that before. We can see that it's been CNC. Wow. We can see that it's been CNC milled to get this uh, small hardening for the TO247 devices. But a nice heatsink that's worth keeping. And speaking of worth keeping. I'm not quite sure if the uh, Atmel board here is uh, salvageable, um, primarily because it's all conformal coded, so it's quite impossible to get out, but maybe this pin here is, uh, is enough to actually uh, get it to work again. The ITPT isolated power supply driver boards looks quite uh, simple and uh, like a standard design, so they should probably not be too hard to repurpose for uh, another isolated gate drive scheme. So those I will keep. And the main inverter CPU, it is an Texas Instruments DSP320. So that's quite a good old FPGA there. Seen that in a lot of electronics and a lot of uh, inverter designs. And on the back side, all you could wish for in resistors and capacitors. Nice long uh, gold plated standoffs there. All this just becomes electronic scrap. And in the uh, large inverter here, I think I will only keep the 200 and, yeah, 247 package switches. These other yeah, shoulder it in switches here, they are hard to get out without breaking and they're usually not that easy to repurpose for anything that you could not just use a break for instead. They usually don't have much better current handling than a 247 device. Besides that we have some uh, smashed up switches, fans, lots of uh, wires. So I'm lucky to get some uh, cable scrap, sell that. But other than that, interesting to see the design, but in terms of repurposing these components, most of it is just glued together. Well, I, I will probably break it if I tr try to get it out. But um, yeah, quite sturdy design. I actually did not seem to be any weird stuff going on here, so Actually, uh, not quite sure why this is a no-name and uh, yeah, OEM product, it seems. If you just uh, try to do a Google Lens search on the how this unit is built, uh, the form factor and the blue frontlet, it seems to have been uh, sold under different names. So, not quite sure where this actually comes from. There is no indication of any manufacturer or brand name in these except Eva Solar that we had on the front. So it could be that they do their own communication boards with the CPU, 
their own web server and everything else here is just produced somewhere. Thank you for watching. I hope you enjoyed this video. I hope you enjoyed the teardown and I hope you learned something. And I really do wish that I also deserved a like and subscribe from you. Perhaps even sharing this video with your friends. It would mean a lot to me if you left a comment, if you asked me a question about this. And I will do my best to help you out. So until next time, see ya.